Yeah. Hope I am audible. Ima Bindu, Ankita. Yeah. So, few current affair, sorry, few current issues are there, not too much. Okay. So, you know Competition Commission of India, and uh, it has replaced the MRTP Act. So, Competition Commission of India has uh, ordered to stop the export of the iron ore. And you know, India is one of the leading producers of iron ore, and we are exporting to most advanced countries like Japan. Again, what we are doing, even we are also importing the steel. So, Competition Commission of India said that as iron ore is a non renewable natural resource, and even it plays a key role in the development of the country, we should stop that. And even Competition Commission of India has also made an important observation with regard to captive mining. Captive mining. So, actually, there is a concept called as captive mining or captive power plants. What is captive mining? Captive mining means the iron and steel plant will have its own mining area. Its own mining area. Or government will allocate the blocks to that company. Say, for example, Jindal, for only for understanding purpose, or Tata, or X. So, government will auction and allocate that block to the concerned company. So here what is happening, so as this complete block is allocated to one company, other company is forced to purchase the iron ore from this company at a higher price. Because sometimes they will also sell to the other companies. Or other companies are deprived of the uh, I mean, availability of iron ore at a lesser price. So it is against the competition. So it, it has made an excellent observation as far as captive mining of uh, this iron ore is concerned. And again, you are having a concept called as captive power plant. When you come to the concept of captive power plant, that company will have their own power plant. That is all. It is called as captive power plant. So two important observations were made by the Competition Commission of India. One is to stop the I mean, export of iron ore. And even it also commented about the adverse impact of captive mining for the uh, players who are in this business. So, the recent increase in iron ore exports, they have, uh, I mean, exports of iron ore has increased. Allocation of captive mines, certain players creates entry barriers for others and is against competition. So, there should be a healthy competition. The aim of the Competition Commission of India is to see that there is a healthy competition. So, these two observations it has made. And... Uh, and uh, even Competition Commission of India said that don't export iron ore. Export the value-added products like steel, steel sheets, stainless steel, etc., etc. Why? The plant will be established in India and it will create a lot of employment opportunity. The government will earn a, uh, I mean, a lot of tax. And even if government export the steel, finished steel, it is having high value. You will earn the lot of foreign exchange. Whereas iron ore is a low value product, will not earn a foreign exchange up to the mark. So, excellent observation made by the Competition Commission. Prioritize export of higher value added products like finished steel to promote self reliant India, upgrade iron ore quality using cutting edge technology to enhance grade. Yes, even technology should be enhanced. The per cap, you see, till today, Indian iron and steel industry is used. Absolute machinery, old methods. Of course, now they are, uh, I mean, reforming, but still not up to the mark. And even the per capita labor productivity of steel in India is very less compared to the China and Japan. So these sort of things we have to improve. And that, and that, has, that observation was also made by the Competition Commission of India. And you know, when you come to the iron ore, in India... This ore is divided into four types based on the ferrous content. Magnetite, hematite, limonite, and siderite. Okay? Yes. Uh, it typically contains iron oxides and the primary types include hematite, magnetites, and tokenite. Of course, it is a it is it is not highly available in India. We in India, 
मैग्नेटाइट हेमेटाइट एंड इवन आई एम लिमोनाइट एंड सिडेराइट इंडिया इज सेल्फ सफिशियंट इन आयरन और प्रोडक्शन इट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सेवन परसेंट टू ग्लोबल प्रोडक्शन इंडिया रैंक्स एज द फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ग्लोबली इंडिया इज द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ स्टील इन द वर्ल्ड आफ्टर चाइना रिमेंबर इट इज एक्सलेंट बिकॉज द द स्टैंड ऑफ लिविंग ऑफ द ऑफ वंस कंट्री इज जडेड बाई द पर कैपिटा यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ द स्टील so if a, if a country is using more and more steel automatically that country is growing growing means the people standard of living is growing and we are the second largest producer of steel in the world and in india sale which will uh, uh, manage all the uh, central public sector units in this sector uh, is the largest producer and in the private sector that is in, the, in second place is occupied by the tisco Tata Iron and Steel Company. Okay, yes. Now, and we are having largest reserves of iron ore in Asia, and uh, luckily Bengal, Bihar, and Jharkhand, even by the side of iron ore, coal is available, and that too, I mean, uh, the coal formed in the I mean Gondwana age, which is uh, of course well and good, uh, um, and it is having good calorific value. so as coal is used to a larger extent to smelt the ore so it facilitated us to establish more and more iron and steel plants there of course even you are also having steel plant in visakhapatnam though it is not having any sort of location like i mean advantage but as it is a port based steel plant they are importing coal or coke from the adjoining countries like indonesia so that is other thing but here in jharkhand chatisgarh area coal and iron ore are available in the nearer proximity which has facilitated easy establishment of the iron and steel industry take the example of tisco tata iron and steel company the first modern uh, steel plant in india it was started in 1907 at a place called as sakchi now in jharkhand now it is called as jamshedpur okay yes About 90% of the total reserves of iron ore are located in the states of Odisha, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka, Goa, etc. Of course, in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, we are not having good reserves, and even the ferrous content is also very less. In Telangana, there is a place called as Bayaram, but the ferrous content is very less. Okay, now you know Sundargarh, Mayurbanj. there you are having uh, i mean excellent iron ore mines and followed by jharkhand i mean nomadi and goa in purbi etc we have this and bailadilla bailadilla is an excellent mine from these uh, bailadilla mines only visakha steel plant will uh, get the iron ore through a 270 km slurry pipeline and other regions take the example of karnataka uh, bellari i mean earlier had lot of iron ore reserves now they have been exhausted to uh, as uh, they were exploited now so when you come to the significance of iron ore yes international trade the two main types of iron ore found in india are hematite and magnetite and this magnetite is having excellent ferric uh, content and even it is also having the magnetic property and you know it is it is having lot of application in the steel industry uh and uh, when you come to the steel sector in india the state of the steel sector in india is key to its economy according for accounting for 2% of the gdp in financial year 2021 22 the major steel producing states include odisha jharkhand chatisgarh etc so where coal is available there automatically iron and steel industries are uh, located but now what happened coal has replaced natural gas and even few industries are using the hydro electricity or electricity uh, take the example of uh, uh, mysore steels limited now it is called as vishweshwaraya steels limited mysore steels limited which is which is established at uh, mysore steels limited is established at which place in karnataka all these things we have discussed in our routine uh, indian geography industries class where mysore steels limited is located
Mysore Sales, online students. Harish. So, Agilasri is able to answer. It is located at Badravati. Now, it is renamed as Vishweshwaraya Steels Limited. And it is the first public sector unit in iron and steel in India. Established by then, Vadiyar family. Yes, yes, yes. Bhagavati, Imabindu, and Prithigaru. Yes, Badravati. So, earlier, they used firewood to melt the iron ore. Later, they used coal. Now, they are using the hydroelectricity power. So, now, because of change in technology, even the location of industry is also changing. And again, now, we are having a concept called as recycling of the steel. That is, used steel is recycled. Scrap is converted into one or other form of uh, the steel. Of course, that steel is not used for this RCC, but other purposes, we can use that. Yes. Okay. Now, challenges um, compared to advanced countries, our per capita consumption is less. And uh, the fluctuations in the steel prices are too high. And uh, the demand is seasonal because uh, in, 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 um, in the rainy season, there will be less demand and uh, majorly this arena steel is consumed by the uh, government activities like uh, uh, laying of roads, RCC roads, bridges, etc. So, uh, compared to other countries, we are having the I mean less demand and uh, in all sectors, the problem is the low investment in R&D. So, just now I told you the per capita labor productivity in India, as far as steel is concerned, is very less uh, when compared to the peers like Japan or China. Low investment in R&D. Dependence on international research increases costs and outdated technologies hamper competitiveness. Yes, outdated technologies will um, result in low quality of product which we cannot sell in the market, whereas other countries will sell at a fair price. And again, the problem is environmental concern as it uses the fossil fuel, coal. CO2 is highly released. Iron and steel industry will release CO2, which is a greenhouse gas. It is a concern. Okay. Now, uh, EU's carbon border adjustment mechanism from January 2026 adverse impact on India's exports of metals like iron, steel, and aluminum products of the EU. To additional environmental scrutiny, yes, that is a problem. And the next problem is now, as far as uh, we are concerned, though India, is, uh, though India's GDP is growing, no doubt, but the country, I, I mean, the other countries, especially like China, their GDP is shrinking. There, they are facing some sort of stagnation in the economy. Automatically, there will be less demand. When there is less demand in the countries like China, automatically other countries will dump. Uh, the, I mean, iron steel in India. So, indigenous industry will face a lot of competition. And automatically, again, they have to reduce the price, which will have adverse impact on their survival. That is the problem. Yes. Now, we, in, uh, since 10 or 15 days, if I am not wrong, the prices have been slashed because of, uh, um, uh, I mean, economy is saying that uh, there is a lot of slowdown in the Chinese economy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, you have to remember the government initiatives for the steel sector or manufacturing sector. And uh, when you come to the steel sector or any sector, you are having a concept called as PLI. So, production linked incentives. The government allocated rupees 6322 crore for a five year period to promote specialty steel manufacturing attract investments and foster technological advancement again see there are various types of steel now take the example of salem you are having a steel plant at salem and it will manufacture specialized steel which will manufacture specialized steel and even it is exporting to advanced countries like usa and uk even it is also selling its steel to the government mints to manufacture the coins. 
So there are various types of steels. So we have to manufacture specialized steels such that we will get more price. And now take the example of Jindal steel. It is manufacturing a specialized steel, if I am not wrong, which is widely used in the turbines manufactured by the BHL. You know, BHL is known for the manufacture of turbines, locomotives, electric motors, etc. Even for Kaleshwaram also, one motor is supplied by the Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. So, we have to stress on manufacturing specialized steel because it will fetch good rate in the market and even its sphere of market will also increase. Many countries will be in need of that steel. Earlier, this specialized steel we used to import from the foreign countries. Now, many many industries in India are manufacturing. Even uh, we made a lot of development in that direction, but still a lot to go. Green steel making. Ministry of Steel constituted 13 tax for, sorry, task forces to discuss and recommend decarbonization strategies. Just now I told you the major uh, impact of this industry is emission of CO2. So they are uh, uh, trying to see that uh, the carbon emissions will reduce in course of time automatically. In the place of coal, they are using other, uh, other uh, what do you say? other item to melt. And the sector is a part of the National Green Mission for Green Hydrogen Production. Uh, and remember this Purvodaya initiative facilitated the establishment of Greenfield Steel Cluster in the eastern states of Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal. Greenfield Steel Cluster means a new area where new industries are established. Unlike the I mean, traditional areas like Jharkhand, etc. New, in the new areas, they want to establish our new plants should be established in the new area. That is the meaning of the steel clusters. And generally, so cluster means a, uh, a group of industries involving in the same business. It is called as a cluster. Yeah. Now, steel scrap recycling policy. So just now I told you, scrap is recycled to get the sheets. Notified in 2019, Facilitating the establishment of metal scrapping centers for scientific processing and recycling of ferrous scrap, including end of life, end of life vehicles. That is, uh, if uh, if uh, I mean vehicles uh, age is more than 25 or 30 years, they will be sent to the scrap. And again, here also we are having a lot of ecological and, and environmental problems. Government is uh, trying to address them. So it is with regard to the uh, iron and steel industry. Now. See, there is a, always conflict between the man and animal in the forest region. Suppose, uh, now take the uh, uh, um, last class I told you. Tigers are uh, facing death when they come, when they are crossing uh, from one forest to other or one side of the road to the other side. So that is the man and animal conflict. So, but there are many tribes in India they venerate the animal and they are not causing harm to it. They are uh, putting some self-restraint to save the uh, flora or fauna. Here it is one of the best example. Worldly tribes of Maharashtra, they are trying to say that I mean, leopards will not face any harm uh, because of their coexistence. The article discusses the peaceful coexistence between Maharashtra's Varli tribe and leopards near the Sanjay Gandhi National Park. So they worship leopards as Vagoba. Vagoba. And even in Telangana also, the tribal people will worship a goddess called as goddess god Nagoba. And Nagoba Jatra is very famous after Samakka Saraka Jatra. Okay. And uh, we have discussed that in the Telangana history. Yeah. So, despite Mumbai having a high leopard density, the Varli shared space with leopards, taking precautions like keeping children indoors after 6 p.m. If not, uh, I mean, leopard will come and they will uh, uh, catch that boy and automatically these people will try to harm them, uh, etc., etc. That kind of issues. River leopards with strands dedicated to Wakoba. Okay, now 
not only this in india there are many tribes which will worship the animals see bishnois bishnoi tribes in rajasthan bishnois river black bugs protecting them from harm and even we have discussed even one king also took several measures jarawas in andaman islands jarawas live in harmony with diverse wildlife on the andaman islands they maintain sustainable hunting practices and have minimal impact on the environment now one gujars one gujars uttarakhand nomadic one gujars coexist with elephants in the himalayan forests they of course worship them and mishmi tribe of assam missing people in assam coexist with the gangetic river dolphin and even they will also perform lot of sacrifices and rituals for their uh, i mean best living or better living mishmi people in assam coexist with the gangetic river dolphin they consider the dolphin sacred and have rituals that promote its conservation kani tribe it is in kerala they exist with the elephants and other wildlife so you can see it, uh, you can take this sort of examples uh, for the peaceful coexistence of uh, animal and man and you know varli tribe is also known for if the famous varli painting varli painting will use a lot of uh, geometrical figures you can see here <laughs> Do you know what will happen if you read one book? See, lot of geometrical figures. Just, uh, uh, sorry. You can see here triangles, circles, and squares. Even in Hyderabad, also uh, on the metro pillars, Telangana government uh, uh, painted this. Yes, triangles, squares, and they. uh what do you say they are nothing but they are the symbols of the nature that's all yes this is the varli painting large number of, you can see just triangles inverted triangle yes upper portion and lower portion and head circle okay so remember this also varli painting yeah now what is smart to what is smart to because you like uh, you you are smart people what is smart to program so when you come to smart to government wanted to encourage r&d in the ayurveda r&d in ayurveda because you know ayurveda is the branch of rigveda which deals with the uh, herbs having the medicinal value and treating the ailments with the help of herbs and even i told you several times even world health organization is also Uh, encouraging r&d in the indigenous medicine or traditional medicines and uh, in that line it has established uh, a center at uh, which place last class we have discussed jamnagar in gujarat yes jamnagar in gujarat so smart to is a program smart to is a program to encourage r and d in ayurveda of course our ayurveda is also good homeopathy is also good but everything is having its own pros and cons okay along with the allopathy yes the central council for research in ayurvedic sciences ccras and the national commission for indian system of medicine have jointly launched the smart to scope for mainstreaming ayurveda research among teaching professional programs so remember smart to is to generate tangible evidence not intangible tangible means yes evidence based tangible evidence demonstrating the efficacy and safety of ayurvedic interventions through interdisciplinary research methods 
translating the findings into public health. Now, see, the importance of Ayurveda has increased. Now, take the example of uh, Khadar Bali, who is from Anantapur or Mysore region. So, since 20 years, he was stressing about the importance of the millets. So, 10 years, nobody has accepted that. But now, now everybody is accepting. And even he was also given an award by the central government. Yes, Siri Danyalu, he made the concept uh, very popular with the help of, uh, uh, sorry, with the help of Raitu Nestham. Okay. Now, many people, it is evidence-based. Their uh, sugar levels are falling like anything. No doubt in it. Even our forefathers used to consume the millets. Nobody consumed the refined rice, refined oils. And even ultra-refined pizzas, ultra-refined burgers. Okay? Yes. Nice program. And uh, what is direct to mobile? You are having D to H. Direct to home. That is broadcasting. Okay? Now, see, when you come to the internet, it is broadband. What is broadcasting? See, earlier... In my childhood days, we were having an antenna of 70 feet, if I am not wrong, at least 40 feet. Through that antenna, okay, TV towers used to broadcast and through that antenna, we used to watch the movies or any programs, especially Ramayana and the Sword of Tipu Sultan on Sundays. So no wire, only through antenna. Now... Uh, we are planning to see that our mobile phones will get uh, such kind of uh, programs without the aid of internet. Just our mobile phone will uh, uh, act like uh, TV. Now you can watch the T20 match without the internet. Yes, wherever you are there, you can watch the T20 or I20, whatever matches or uh, other things you will watch. You try to remember this. Indian telecom operators have urged the government to auction spectrum for direct-to-mobile D2M technology services. So like you are having, if you, if you place a small receiver on the top of your house, you can take the direct-to-home services. Yes, many channels, they are, they are broadcasted free of cost. Yes, government is broadcasting free of cost. No need of any internet. Yes. What is DTM technology? It is a new age communication approach that combines broadband and broadcast. DTM allows mobile phones to capture territorial digital TV signals. Mobile will take the TV signals like we are having phone. See, our phone will take the FM. Radio, radio FM, Miri Matar 93.5 FM, Harish, Shalav Naro. Okay. Okay. DTM allows mobile phones to capture in territorial digital TV signals, enabling the direct streaming of multimedia content, including live TV matches, just like FM. So, future, everything in the hand and like uh, our uh, online classes through Class Plus app. I will be in your hand. I am in your hand. Okay? Yes. It proves beneficial for delivering emergency alert, disaster manner. Yes, these sort of things, uh, it will help us at the time of disasters because you will not have the, when you are not having the internet, then you cannot get any support. So now, without internet, you can get the alerts. Yes, these sort of points you can use uh, to tackle uh, a, a point to mitigate the disaster. It proves beneficial for delivering emergency alerts, disaster management, audio content, and citizen-centric information directly to mobile devices, especially for farmers also, it is very important. They can take the informed decision. Yes. Reducing reliance on internet data consumption. Different between broadband and broadcast. Broadband involves high-speed internet 
axis transmitting data in both directions broadcast is one way transmission of content such as tv or radio signals to wide audience to wide audience so you know and you people are familiar with the internet etc so broadband is like uh, sorry broadcast is like our direct to home service now see actually you know what is meant by conductor conductor is a thing or substance or metal which will allow the heat or electricity understand but what is meant by superconductivity superconductivity means transmitting electricity without resistance without losses that is the meaning of superconductivity without losses see now take the example of any country even advanced country like usa also they are having lot of transmission losses yes when we are when we are transmitting the electricity now take the example of nagarjun sagar when when hydropower is generated there it is transmitted to hyderabad in course of transmission there is a lot of losses they are called as transmission losses because of the resistance uh, so uh, i mean uh, so given by that metal either aluminum or copper they are not resistant free they are conductors but not superconductors what are superconductors means they will transmit without any loss so this research says that at low temperatures few metals are becoming superconductors they are conducting the electricity without any resistance without any losses it is a very uh, important uh, i mean ground breaking uh, i mean research a recent study sorry <coughs> a recent <coughs> study by scientists in china and japan has reported signs of superconductivity in a material called lk99 which had been controversially claimed to be a room temperature and pressure rtp superconductor the research observed that mesner effect in copper substituted lead apatite indicating superconductivity the mesner effect is crucial in identifying materials that conduct electricity without so actually what is meant by mesner effect and we are gifted with iit guwahati physics uh, mtech and is the right person to answer that what is meant by mesner effect mr harish see when you come to the mesner effect when electricity is passing through a metal okay at room temperatures or at cold temperature a magnetic field is developing around it that is called as the mesner effect okay of course we have studied all these things in the intermediate level but long back mine is 90 mz even most of you have not uh, born at that time if i am not wrong yes so try to remember what is mesner effect such kind of things will appear in upsc the research observed the mesner effect. what is mesner effect it is a phenomena observed in superconductors where these materials expel magnetic fields from their interior when cooled below a critical temperature after all magnetic field is very important in physics and electricity turbine will rotate a dynamo because of magnetic field only power is generated motor will work when electricity is converted into magnetic field stata and rotor it is very important how a fan works the same principle okay this expulsion occurs as the material transition to a superconducting state displaying the ability to conduct electron current without any resistance so remember superconductors means without any power loss without any re resistance they will transmit the matter what is the unit for resistance 
What is the unit for resistance, Madam Akilasri? Yes, yes, yes. Ohm. Ohm. Ohm is a unit for the resistance. And for and for and for capacity. And for capacity. And for capacity, capacity, unit for capacity, Farad, Shura, okay, Varsha is saying Farad, Farad, okay, and what is the unit for more, more, uh, just opposite of ohms is what is the uh, what is that uh, physical phenomena? Opposite of ohms. Parad, yes, excellent. Excellent, that is good. Now, red matter, new superconductor material. A group of researchers, of course, just now I told you. Superconductivity was discovered in 1911 by Heike Kamerling Owens, who studied the research of solid mercury at cryogenic temperature less. Cryogenic temperatures using the recently discovered liquid helium as refrigerant. Of course, I am not the uh, science. Uh... Yes. Okay. This is with regard to the superconductor. Superconductors are materials that conduct electricity with no resistance. Unlike the more familiar conductors such as copper or steel, a superconductor can carry a current indefinitely without losing any energy. However, superconductivity is hard to achieve as they need to be extremely cooled and subjected to extreme pressure to work. Not possible in all conditions. But still, phenomena is very important. Of course, it is a very big topic. Now, <coughs> why green cover index is in the news? Why green cover index is in the news? See now, what is green cover? That is uh, just uh, increasing the greenery. That is planting the trees. Even on the sides of highways, not only on the sides, but also at the median of the highways, especially four-lane roads, lot of plants and trees are grown because actually they will minimize the reflection between the opposing moving vehicles. The trees will... Minimize the reflection. This reflection will cause a lot of danger. Many accidents are caused because of that reflection. If our vehicle is old, then you cannot see the road because that glass will get some sort of issue by which you cannot see the road. We have to, we are forced to replace the glass. Because nowadays you are getting high pointed bulbs with high, uh, what you say, high light. Yeah. So now on highways, the government is, of course, National Highway Authority of India is planting the trees. And if National Highways Authority of India is giving that road to the private person, they are involved in planting the trees. Now physically, they are calculating the cover. Physically, they are going and they are calculating the cover. Now it is a tough task. And uh, if you do physically, even you may calculate in an unfair manner. 
you may you may exaggerate the even you may exaggerate the green cover also for your selfish ends so to avoid that hardship now nhai has uh, made a mou with the national remote sensing agency so with only with the help of satellite we can assess the green cover in future everything will be uh, in that line only everything technology everything technology like big basket small basket zepta zemto ziggy biggy everything online the national highway authority of india has signed a 3 year memorandum of understanding with national remote sensing center a part of the isro the collaboration aims to develop and report a green cover index for india's extensive national highways network the green highways policy initiated in 2015 prioritizes greening highway corridors and currently monitoring reliance on field visits so there is no need of field visit with the help of remote sensing we can conclude that earlier we used to use the rain gauges to calculate the rainfall now with the help of remote sensing we are calculating the average rainfall in a region and even earlier the earlier we used to involve in field visit to assess the crop pattern now with the help of national remote sensing agency we are able to assess the crop pattern in which area which crop is dominating so that is a usage of technology in various fields for the betterment of the mankind <clears throat> now why mohammad yunus you know mohammad yunus was awarded nobel peace prize long back as he tried to elevate poverty among the rural masses of bangladesh especially women folk by giving collateral free small amount of loans that is micro credit without any guarantee these people were given loans and th those people never got loan from the uh, banking system because banking system relies on the collateral so because of his achievement he was given the nobel peace prize and now he is facing lot of hardship in the bangladesh because he is uh, not in good terms with the present bangladeshi prime minister okay yes Nobel Prize winner Mohammad Yunus was sentenced to 6 months in jail by a Bangladeshi court for violating labor laws. Yunus faces charges including corruption and fund embezzlement. The court found his company Gramin Telecom guilty of labor law violation. Gramin Bank is also established by him and he gave micro loans to the people uh, who are uh, not fit to get the loans from the other normal banking sector. <laughs> However, supporters claim the case is politically motivated due to his strained relationship with the prime minister sheikh hasina who accused him of exploiting the poor in august last year over 160 personalities like barack obama etc ban ki moon etc said that he should not be uh, given such kind of treatment that is the great nobel laureate okay theek hai mohammad yunus through his innovative microfinance model particularly with the establishment of gramin bank has made significant contribution to alleviating poverty his approach of providing small collateral free loans that is very very important even now in india um, uh, even the street vendors are also getting the collateral free loans and even self help groups are also getting the collateral free loans and many microfinance companies are giving the collateral free loans and even loan apps they are also giving the collateral free loans but they will face issues in course of time both issues with creditors and also debtors yes to the poor especially women has empowered millions of entrepreneurs who, who would not qualify for traditional bank loans for his work he was awarded the nobel peace prize in 2006 other famous personalities facing such kind of issue alexei navalny Russian opposition leader and anti-corruption activities faced imprisonment and legal challenges in Russia. Aung San Suu Kyi, you know, Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi. Li Xiaobo, Liu Xiaobo, Chinese human rights activists and Nobel Peace Prize laureate, imprisoned for advocating political reform in China. Raif Badawi, 
Saudi Arabian blogger and activist jailed for promoting free speech and political reform in Saudi Arabia. Mahasa Amini. She was a women rights activist following her death in the police custody. Civil unrest and protest began against the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran. But we are suppressed by, of course. So, this is how the good voice is getting suppressed. Now, Marshi Valmiki International Airport. Everybody know that Ayodhya Airport is named as Marshi Valmiki International Airport because Ramayana was written by Marshi Valmiki. <coughs> now, Babel Mandap Strait. You know where is Babel Mandap Strait? Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. So there was some issue in this region. Explosions were reported near a cargo ship in the Babel Mandap Strait on January 2nd, according to the UK Maritime. So remember such kind of uh, issues where you will get the questions. Yes, Red Sea, Gulf of Eden. This region is the Babel Mandap. And here you know Suez Canal, Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea. Of course, there are many straits like Park Strait separating India and uh, Sri Lanka. What is a strait? A narrow water body connecting big water bodies like seas and oceans is called as the strait. And it is found because of phenomena like tectonicity. What is tectonicity? Movement of the plates. Bubble meant up straight. What is a straight? A straight is a narrow, naturally formed waterway that connects two larger bodies of water, typically seas or oceans. They can be formed by a variety of geological processes such as tectonic activity, erosion, or the submergence of land, etc. So there are many straits. The strait of bubble meant up is a crucial maritime choke point connecting the Red Sea with the Gulf of Eden and the Indian Ocean. And Suez Canal route will pass through this. And Suez Canal route is the busiest route for India. And we will get a lot of things from there. And we will send, a, and even we will also send a lot of things there and take from there. Strait of Gibraltar, important straits. Mediterranean Sea and Atlantic. Strait of Gibraltar. Mediterranean Sea and Atlantic. Spain, Morocco. Spain in the Europe, Morocco in the Africa. And uh, Bosporus Strait, Black Sea and Sea of Marmara. Strait of Hormuz, Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. Okay? Yes, in our uh, Arabian Sea. Malacca Strait, Andaman Sea and South China Sea. Bubble meant up, just we have discussed. English Channel, North Sea and English Channel. Taiwan Strait, East China Sea and South China Sea. Very easy, Cook Strait, Tasman Sea and Pacific. Even try to remember this... Uh, uh, straits also. Now, what is meant by reverse flip? What is meant by reverse flip? Anybody, because you will spend a lot of time to study current affairs by keeping iPods in your ears. Reverse flip, okay. So reverse flip is a term related to the economy, okay. See, suppose there is a concept called as tax havens. Tax havens, where the taxation is zero. See, many people from India are residing in Singapore, okay. And there they are working, opening the bank account and also a DMAT account. And they are trading the stocks of the USA. You are having Mauritius, tax seven. So actually what happened, many countries will establish, sorry, many people will establish the companies in the such kind of tax events. Suppose an Indian has established a company in such kind of tax seven. But in course of time, what happened, Indian government say, for understanding purpose, Indian government have initiated the policies 
which are more lucrative than this tax havens. Automatically, what happened? This company will come back to India. That is called as the reverse flip. Of course, there is a lot of things in, in, involved in that. It is not so easy. But first, they will open the subsidiary and they will transfer everything here. That is the meaning of the reverse flip. Okay? Yes. Several well-funded startups, including Pine Labs and Udan, are considering relocating their holdings companies to India, a trend known as reverse flipping, ahead of potential IPO IPOs. See, they are in Singapore, say, for understanding purpose. They are startups. Okay? Now, they want to raise the money. Now, India is the potential. Now, you can see the IPOs, excellently, they are uh, uh, doing well in India. And even the pumping of mutual funds into the markets is also high. And even yesterday also, the SEBI has taken an excellent decision with regard to shorting uh, by the foreign investors in the wake of the Supreme Court judgment. Of course, it is a big topic, but one day I will try to <clears throat> take that. Okay. So, the shift is attributed to a tightening related environment there and potential IPO plans and uh, here means they can raise money very easily in India. So, what they will do? They will first open a subsidiary in India. Automatically, they will go for the IPO. Yes. Reverse flipping is a term used to describe the trend of overseas startups shifting their domicile to India and listing on Indian stock exchanges. Reverse flipping can be done through shared swaps and inbound mergers. They will merge with the Indian country. Some reasons for reverse flipping include access to venture capital. Means Indian India is having a lot of funds now. Favorable tax regime. Yes. Better, in, better intellectual property, pro, property production. Favorable government policies. Of course, Modi is, uh, is taking good policies. Uh, I mean, it is the reason why India's ranking in ease, ease of doing business has increased a lot. Okay? Yes. Now, so, a study commissioned by the Niti Ayog suggests to levy 20 to 30 percent health tax on the food items which are having more sugar content. Take the example of your soft drinks, completely sugar content. And they termed it as the health tax. Why? Sugar is causing a lot of health issues like diabetes, obesity, etc. Yes, sugar will give direct calories. Why the people who are involved in sports will consume glucose instantaneously? You will get instantaneous energy. Yes. A study. <laughs> Suppose if you increase tax, what happened? The consumers will be discouraged for purchasing. Automatically it is said that a huge chunk of sugar will be saved. Usage of sugar will be saved. Yes, that is a point made by them. A study commissioned by Niti Ayog recommends imposing a health tax of 20 to 30 percent in addition to GST on foods high in sugar, salt and fat, as well as sugar sweetened beverages. Sugar sweetened beverages, your Coke, Key, Coke, etc. Everybody will carry that. The study funded by UNICEF aims to influence policies that promote healthy eating practices. The research suggests that such taxes could lead to a 13 to 18 percent decrease in demand for sugar in bulk purchases. Very nice idea. But nobody will accept. Nobody will put an end to drinking Coca Cola. See, now you can see the cigarette box. 75 percent area of the box is covered by a warning. But what they will do, they will purchase the box, they will throw the box and handle the cigarette. That is what happening. So you should have the self-restraint, not government or some other agency. Okay? Yes. And you know, what is Desert Cyclone? It is a joint military exercise between the United Arab Emirates and India. The India-UAE joint military exercise named Desert Cyclone has commenced in Majan, Rajasthan and is scheduled from 2nd to 15th January 2024. Okay, objectives. Desert Cyclone. Enhance interoperability interoperability in subconventional operations, desert flag, joint air exercise and training, Zayed Talwar, the bilateral naval exercise, Zayed Talwar aims to enhance the interoperability and synergy between the Indian Navy and UAE Navy. So try to remember, but tough thing, every month you will have one or other uh, 
exercises one month with the sri lanka other month with bangladesh every month you have to involve in such kind of cycles it is very tough but there is no other way yes now kalpakam automatic power station so prime minister dedicated to the nation indigenously developed demonstration fast reactor fuel reprocessing plant one of the unique in the world here used fuel is recycled and you will get more fuel than the fuel which we have used and uh, these are called as the uh, uh, fast breeder reactors with the set of fast breeder uh, uh, reactors this plant is located fast breeder reactor their uh, fast moving neutrons are struck to the uranium to make it unstable in the conventional slow moving neutrons are struck here fast moving of course your snt sirs will tease that the, the plant will reprocess spent fuel from the fast breeder reactor at the kalpakam atomic power station a fast breeder reactor is a type of nuclear reactor that uses fast neutrons to cause the fission yes in nuclear reactor you are having the fission where the nucleus is break whereas in the solar insulation we are getting solar insulation because of nuclear fusion hydrogen plus hydrogen kendraka sammelanam here vichitti okay nuclear fission of uranium 238 this was asked in the examination uranium 238 unlike conventional nuclear reactor that use slow neutrons the term breeder refers to the ability of these reactors to produce more fissile material than they consume that is very important you will eat more but work less but this will eat less but work more fbr is the key to india's three stage nuclear power program it is the only of its kind in the world and is capable of reprocessing both carbide and oxide fuel discharged from the fast reactors yes this is a map where you are having the nuclear reactors in india yeah so this person ias officer shant gaurav was in uh, news and he was given prime minister's award for excellence in public administration what he did he replaced uh, paddy cultivation by ragi ragi is a good food and requires less amount of uh, water and even it can be grown in the drought conditions whereas paddy requires lot of water and even it is less nutritious and ragi is nutritious Gaurav's innovative approach shifted locals from water intensive paddy cultivation to a more sustainable model of ragi cultivation. The Deputy Commissioner of Gumla and Jharkhand has been created for transforming the poverty stricken district into the ragi capital of India. And in future, you see, you will get all the millets related items millet bar, power bar, everything. they are good for health no doubt no doubt gauro's innovative approach shifted locals from water intensive paddy cultivation to a more sustainable model of ragi cultivation the district one plagued by extreme poverty and nuxlet insurgency underwent a remarkable turnaround under gauro's leadership for these efforts he received the prime minister's award for excellence in public administration and when you come to the sukanya samriddhi yojana it is a scheme to provide social security for the girls and now the government has increased the interest rate it is reason why it is in the news the government has increased the interest rate of the sukanya samriddhi yojana scheme by 20 basis points for the january march quarter ahead of the 2024 lok sabha polls the new interest rate is 8.2% up from the previous 8% a good interest rate objective aims to ensure equitable share to a girl child in resource and savings of a family small deposit scheme for a girl child launched under the beti bachao beti padhao initiative offers higher rate of interest than ppf exclusive of girls below 10 years with a longer lock in period that is only after 18 years they can withdraw that is the meaning of the lock in period small deposit sir in 2015 small deposit account the scheme offers income tax benefits under section 80c interest earned to the sukanya samriddhi account is tax free 
withdrawals can be made after the account holder turns 18 10 to 18 is the lock in period and they can withdraw 50% at a time a year and you can uh, deposit that in the post offices and also our banks now marine energy Conver conversion system sectoral committee as like you are having the bureau of indian standards bureau of indian standards has replaced the isi mark now bureau of indian standards wanted to open a system where they will give standards for the marine resources including the power okay has taken a bureau of indian standards has taken a significant step in promoting standardization in the field of marine energy conversion systems by establishing the marine energy conversion system sectional committee okay so even for energies also they are giving the standards by which by uh, with that uh, seal we can purchase isi mark earlier now we are having the bsi why surya namaskar is in the news surya namaskar is one yoga posture that is worshiping the surya in the early morning why it is in the news Anybody? 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 Nobody. Gujarat set a Guinness World Record with over 51 people performing Surya Namaskar simultaneously at 108 venues. The main event took place at Modera Sun Temple in Mahesana. Even earlier also we have discussed Modera Sun Temple in Mahesana. You suggest that now also. About Surya Namaskar, Surya Namaskar also known as Sun Salutation is a yogic practice that involves a series of 12 postures. You may get in the examination how many postures. 12 postures are asanas. The practice is to do pay respect to the sun, the source of power. See here. Of course, about the Sun Temple, it is constructed by Bhima 1, Chalukyans of Gujarat. About the Sun Temple at Modera, built in 102627 when Muhammad Ghazni invaded India. It is a period when Ghazni invaded India. Even he also destroyed this temple. But it, I, maybe it was reconsidered or, or at least renovated. Built in 102627 CE during Bhima once during the Solanki dynasty, the Modera Sun Temple is a protected monument managed by the Archaeological Survey of India. And uh, it is uh, it was listed on the UNESCO's World Heritage Tentative List in December 2022. Okay, the annual Uttararadha Mahotsav Dance Festival is organized at the temple by the Tourism Corporation of Gujarat. Try to remember all these. And when you come to the Karsavan massacre of 1948, on January 1st, 1948, Karsavan in present day Jharkhand witnessed a massacre. Similar to Jilinwala Bagh because they oppose their merger with the Orissa. And you know Jilinwala Bagh massacre, April 13th, 1919. General Odair is responsible for that. Okay. And Divya Kala Mela 2023. It is a show where the physically challenged people manufactured items are sold. Divya Kala Mela 2023. That, that, Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, Divyangan, Divyangjan, is set to inaugurate the Divya Kala Mela 2023 in Bangalore. Divya Kala Mela is organized across India is part of the initiative to empower persons with disabilities during the year 2023-24. About Divya Kala Mela, around 100 Divyang artisans from 20 states will display their products like gifts, toys, etc. So, this is about the this week's current affairs. Thank you for your patience. Thanks a lot. Thank you once again.